Wolves are aggressive little things. They cause a lot of trouble, there's no denying that. They always start fights with other animals, but sometimes they start fights with animals or people that they really shouldn't. These are times wolves messed with the wrong opponent. Number 20. Tibetan Mastiff vs. Wolf is it possible for a powerful adult Tibetan Mastiff to defeat a strong adult wolf? A Tibetan Mastiff is an excellent contender for surviving a wolf attack and not being killed by one. It's not the best contender for slaying a large adult wolf. These are two very distinct things. Anyone familiar with dogs that force fights on wild animals, particularly hunting dogs, notably mouths on hunting dogs, knows that a high level of speed and agility is essential. A lethargic dog such as a Tibetan Mastiff will not even approach a wolf that does not want to be touched. It's just way too fast. The minimal level of sighthound necessary is a dog that is roughly 50% sighthound. Unless the wolf is restricted in a small space, a dog with greater agility than a Tibetan Mastiff would be appropriate. Something like a Presa Canario or Cane Corso and dogs from this family were commonly employed in wolf pit fights. The Tibetan Mastiff, on the other hand, is much more defensive-oriented. It's a really difficult animal to kill. It has a thick hide with protecting subcutaneous fat that moves and shifts the hide away from important places. It also possesses exceptionally thick hair that serves as an additional layer of defense, as well as dense, heavy muscles and extremely strong, sturdy bones. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Pitbull vs. Wolf well, let's try and find out more about this matchup. Pitbull is a name used in the United States to describe a breed of dog developed from bulldogs and terriers, although it is also used as a nickname for the American Pitbull Terrier breed in other countries, such as the United Kingdom. Pitbulls are noted for their tenacity and stubbornness to let go of a bite, even while in excruciating agony. Pitbulls were formerly thought to have locking jaws according to a common belief, the unwilling to release is a behavioral rather than a physiological attribute, and a pit bull's jaws have no locking mechanism. Pit bull type dogs, like other terriers, hunting and bull baiting breeds, may bite, hold, and shake, and will sometimes refuse to let go. Pit bulls have broad skulls, well developed facial muscles, and powerful jaws, and some research shows that pit bull bites are more dangerous because they bite deeply and grind their teeth into tissue. You. It should be simple to defeat a wolf in normal circumstances, right? Wrong. Theodore Roosevelt was a rancher in Montana before becoming President Roosevelt. He saw a single timber wolf kill two huge mastiffs in a matter of seconds. Two against one. A 180 pound plus North American timber wolf will tear your cane corso, bully cutta, doggo argentino, kangal, Irish wolfhound, pit bull, and other dogs to ribbons. Any domestic dog is weaker, slower, less smart than a wolf. A particularly large pit bull may survive long enough for a person to intervene with a rifle and save it from an Arabian wolf. Whether it was game or not, the pit bull would succumb swiftly if confronted with a northern timber wolf, so the wolf in the rare topic was maybe sick or just having a bad day. Number 18. Brown Bear vs. Wolf Fight to Death the connection between wolves and grizzly bears is one of the most exciting things witnessed throughout the Yellowstone wolf reintroduction effort, which began in 1995, according to Doug Smith, the Yellowstone Wolf Project's leader. Grizzly bears are popping up near wolf dens in greater numbers, and they are stealing more wolf carcasses. According to Smith, grizzlies are drawn to wolf dens because of the musty odor emanating from the leg bones and other food items brought back by the alphas to feed their young. Although grizzlies are more formidable, Smith claims that wolves are faster and outnumber bears. Smith even saw a bear holding 24 wolves at bay at a kill. Although the wolves had killed a bull elk, the bear took over the feast. 
He claims there were 10 wolves and 4 bears on a wolf slaughter at another occasion. The situation was under the control of the largest bear. All of the wolves and the other 3 bears sat about and waited for their turn, said Smith. Without a doubt, Smith believes that the wolves' existence benefits Yellowstone's grizzlies by allowing them to effectively seize the huge canid's food. Some ranchers and other groups have objected to the wolf reintroduction effort, but for the most part, it has been effective without harming the bears. Number 17. Eagles Hunting Wolf an ancient custom of hunting wolves with eagles still exists in western Mongolia. Genghis Khan and Kublai Khan both owned 1,000 hunting birds including eagles, falcons, and jeer falcons, according to history. Only the Khans were authorized to hunt in certain parts of the steppe, which were marked with stones. The sport of kings was wolf hunting with eagles. Mongolian Kazakhs train their eagles to kill wolves, and the bird of prey is typically treated as a family member. A falconer who hunts with the golden eagle is known as a burkutchi. Even the experienced trainers thought that teaching this bird was difficult and even dangerous. The bird is never treated as a slave by its owner, but rather as a hunting companion. Companion. Although hunting with birds of prey is stunning, it is mainly limited to small game. If you have access to Mongolian golden eagles, however, this is not the case. The fascinating Mongolian custom of hunting wolves with a golden eagle is highlighted in this video. That may seem incredible until you consider that falconry bred golden eagles may have wingspans of over 9 feet and weigh over 27 pounds. They can take down Central Asian wolves thanks to their massive size. Mongolians have been using this traditional hunting skill for thousands of years, and Genghis Khan is said to have possessed over 1,000 hunting birds. This clip, which includes many eagle wolf hunts and traditional Mongolian throat singing, showcases that proud heritage. Number 16. German Shepherd Attack vs. Wolf is it possible for a German Shepherd to defeat a wolf? Let's have a look at what we've got on these two big canines. Biting force, which is measured in pounds per square inch, is one technique to assess a dog's or wolf's strength. The biting force of an ordinary dog is 230 to 250 psi, which is twice that of a human. Dogs with larger jaws, on the other hand, will have stronger bites than the ordinary dog. The German Shepherd is one of the most powerful canines, with an average biting force of 238 pounds per square inch. They are frequently chosen as police and military dogs, as well as farmhands and security dogs, due to this and their concentrated, devoted nature. They are also occasionally employed as hunting partners, however this is a rare occurrence. When it comes to unknown people and animals, a German Shepherd can be aloof and hostile. But with proper obedience training from a young age, they are unlikely to attack unless provoked. Wolves are far more powerful with biting forces ranging from 400 to 1,200 pounds per square inch, depending on whether the wolf is defending itself or biting for another purpose. Although wolves do not feed on dogs, they are territorial creatures that may attack if they perceive other animals encroaching on their territory or vying for food. Number 15. Siberian Tiger vs. Wolves what if we pinned a lone wolf against a lone tiger? The typical tiger is substantially heavier, stronger, and taller than a wolf. It is likely to be quicker and stronger in duels, since it is heavier and has greater muscle. All of these factors point to a bleak future for the wolf. A wolf, on the other hand, has more stamina than a tiger. If they were to race one other over a longer distance, this may give the wolf the upper hand. This might possibly weaken the tiger in a chase to the point where it gives the wolf a distinct edge and allows it to prevail. It's also worth noting that even if left alone, a wolf is still a formidable predator, so the tiger's task may not be simple. However, because of its size and strength, the tiger would most likely defeat a single wolf. Male and female tigers have distinct sexual dimorphism, with the latter being consistently smaller. The huge tiger subspecies, the size disparity between men and females, is proportionately higher, with males weighing up to 1.7 times more than females. Males have broader forepaw pads than females, meaning sex can be determined from tracks. In terms of shoulder height, Bengal and Siberian tigers are among the tallest cats. They are also among the largest cats that have ever lived, weighing more than 300 kilograms. Number 14. 
Cougar vs Wolf in Rare Fight to the Death A guy from Lake Cowichan filmed a fierce wilderness struggle between two of Canada's most dangerous predators, a cougar and a wolf. At approximately 3 a.m., Rod Mizak was traveling along a logging service road near Cowichan Lake with a friend when he came across the extraordinary spectacle. According to Mizak, the two animals were so engrossed in their fight that they didn't even see his car. He said, At the beginning, we weren't sure what was going on, he said. We realized quite quickly it was a cougar and a wolf. It took a minute for us to pick up our jaws off our laps. The cougar was on its back, the wolf and cougar were both locked on to each other's faces, and the wolf had the upper hand, he went on. Then the wolf decided to let go and the cougar made one leap and nailed the wolf right between between these little trees. That's when the lethal cat struck, its massive jaw clamping down on the wolf's neck and delivering the final blow. The crunch of the spine, the first initial hit. I relive it still. It was just the most incredible instance I ever could imagine, Mizak said. Number 13. Wolf vs. Snake is it possible for a snake to attack or kill a wolf? This is conceivable, but only in a few places on the planet. The territories of the reticulated python and the Indian gray wolf may still overlap, and the reticulated python is undoubtedly large and powerful enough to attack, kill, and swallow an Indian gray wolf. Apart from really enormous pythons, sometimes preying on wolves, wolves would probably be able to eat snakes. It all depends on who gets the first drop on who. Snakes that are too small to swallow a wolf are unlikely to attack one. They may, however, effectively defend themselves against a wolf, killing it in the process. Some venomous snake species fall within this category. In a wolf-snake fight, most snakes would end up as meal. Snakes seldom attack things they can't consume, or at the very least assume they are capable of eating. No snake would attack a wolf if it saw one. Every snake within a wolf's range, on the other hand, will defend itself against an attack wolf, there is a distinction between aggressive and defensive behavior. Wolves are not eaten by snakes. As a result, no snakes attack them. Because wolves devour snakes, any snake assaulted by them will strive to avoid being eaten. Those that are venomous could get lucky and strike first, causing enough agony or death to a wolf before being eaten. So, in summary, the wolf just has to make sure he picks a snake that's not too spicy, by which I mean insanely venomous. Number 12. Wolf vs. Lynx The WWF published a film recently of an extraordinary meeting between a severely endangered wolf and a family of lynx in Europe's untamed woodlands. Both predators have recovered from the verge of extinction in Europe as a result of robust protection, but they remain vulnerable. According to WWF, the comeback of wildlife in Europe seen in these photographs is an undeniable indicator of a restored, healthy, and balanced environment that should be safeguarded even more. The video depicts our dogs and cats' wild forefathers interacting in the cold forests of Poland's Carpathian Mountains. It was created by Zenek Wojtas, a scientist and videographer who commented on this once-in-a-lifetime experience, saying observing wild lynx and wolves in their natural habitat is extremely difficult and rare. I often spend months in freezing conditions to see animals in nature. This encounter is unique as it gives us an insight into the harmony that exists in nature where predators can live in the same habitat without harming each other. As the wolf slowly walked towards the female lynx, she arced her back to protect her kittens, as all mothers would do. It was not a fight the wolf only wanted to play. The Eurasian lynx and grey wolf populations have nearly vanished in some regions of Europe. Necessitating their protection under the EU Nature Directives, Europe's primary environmental law. According to WWF estimates, Poland presently has around 1,000 wolves and 200 lynxes. WWF is now pushing to ensure that EU nature laws protecting species like the wolf and lynx, as well as thousands of natural areas, are conserved and effectively implemented on a national level. Unsustainable economic activities such as deforestation, agriculture, and energy extraction are putting some of the world's most treasured natural regions in jeopardy. According to recent WWF research, to combat such devastating harm, the WWF is pushing for severe legal actions. Number 11. 
Master of the Sky, Owl vs. Wolf, Super Powered Owls Do you think an owl would have a hard time fending off a wolf pack? Snowy owls employ air supremacy to put their earthbound opponents off balance, as shown in the BBC documentary Super Powered Owls. As a result, a group of wolves out to dine on a nest of newborn owls is in for a surprise. The snowy owl, also known as the arctic owl, white owl or arctic owl, is a huge white owl that belongs to the true owl family. Snowy owls are found in the arctic areas of North America and the pale arctic, where they mostly nest on tundra. It has several modifications to its environment and habitats that distinguish it from other extant owls. It is the only owl with entirely white plumage, and it is one of the biggest species of owl. Males have a more pure white overall appearance, whilst females have more dark brown specks. Male snowy owls have black markings that resemble females until they reach adulthood, at which time they usually become white. Although not infallible, the composition of brown marks around the wing is the most accurate method for aging and sexing individual snowy owls. Snowy owls are known to dominate, kill, and feast on a wide variety of other predators, almost definitely more often than they are preyed upon by other predators. Number 10. Kangal beats out of Wolf for attacking his friend. A wolf attacked the pet dog, and when it tried to flee, it was confronted by a Turkish Kangal dog. The Kangal dog attacked the wolf and was able to liberate its comrade from the wolf's lethal jaw. The Kangal is the most well-known of the Turkish sheepdog breeds. It's a massive dog with a monstrous personality. They are bold and fierce when it comes to safeguarding flocks from predators on grasslands. It is patient and loyal when it comes to protecting its family. This is a fantastic watchdog that is both intelligent and adorable. These dogs are strong, well-built, and athletic. The Kangal dog have a mastiff-like appearance, similar to the English Mastiff and the South African Borbol. They have a black masked face. The rest of the body is a single color ranging from dun to steel gray. These dogs have a short and dense double coat. Kangal Shepherds have massive heads supported by strong shoulders and sturdy, slightly arced necks. A scissor or level bite is seen in their strong jaw. There is some dewlap on the neck. Even if he is being held at the neck by an opponent, the dog may move his head and neck freely. Their build is strong and muscular with a deep chest and well-sprung ribs. The eyes of these dogs have a range of hues, from golden to brown. They are spherical in shape, widely spaced, and deep within the skull. Their ears are medium in size, triangular in form, and have rounded tips. These dogs have the demeanor of a livestock guardian. They are watchful, self-reliant, territorial, and protective of the domestic animals or people with whom they have formed bonds. Number 9. Caucasian Shepherd Kills the Wolves to Defend Sheep Flock one of the most remarkable characteristics of the powerful Caucasian Shepherd dog is his courage and instinct, which allows him to combat wild animals and even kill wolves. Well, it's critical that we take a closer look at how nature works and comprehend the true nature of the wolf killer dog. For this, we'll take you through a few stages to help you understand the evolution of this breed, as well as how it came to be known in the hopes of answering the question, can a Caucasian shepherd kill a wolf. Protection from wolves and other wild creatures is one of the breeding traits of the Caucasian Russian dog. The goal of creating these large dogs was to follow shepherds and guarding sheep flocks. Therefore, they retain these characteristics even if they are no longer utilized to guard sheep. Here you can see the Caucasian Ovcharka, as it's known in Russian territory, in its native habitat, with sheep. By witnessing how they do their job guarding and what they are trained to do by the shepherds, they may learn more about this dog's behavior and its reputation as a wolf slayer. Wolves are perhaps the greatest threat to sheep, therefore having a few Caucasian shepherd dogs patrolling the flock is critical to keep the wolves at bay. Just their presence is enough to make the wolves think again about attacking the livestock here, so they are more a deterrent than actual wolf killers. Number 8. Wolves vs. Herd of Muskox 
Gordon, a cinematographer for the BBC, gets stuck between wolves and their prey, a herd of muskox, in this film. The muskox had some really impressive tactical maneuvers such as the bull charging and intimidating to clear space as the remainder of the herd scuffled uphill, and so on. The wolf never got a chance to come close to its young because they shielded their flanks so carefully. The muskox is a hooved mammal belonging to the Bovidae family. It is native to the Arctic and it's known for its thick coat and pungent odor generated by males during the seasonal rut, which gives it its name. During mating season, this musky odor has the function of enticing females. Uming Mac is its Inuktitut name, which means bearded one. Musk oxen are found mostly in Greenland and the Canadian Arctic territories of the Northwest Territories, and none of it, with reintroduced populations in Alaska, Yukon, and Siberia, as well as imported population in Norway that went to Sweden, where a tiny population presently exists. Number 7. Wolf Meets Horse a wildlife photographer in Abruzzo, Italy, shot the footage in question here. Six wolves form a ring around a single horse and predictably show a lot of attention. Even though the horse has a size advantage, the wolves are more than capable of taking it down. The horse, on the other hand, does not appear to be afraid in the least. It sits down in the snow and starts rolling around among the wolves. Behind the camera, the photographer, who is undoubtedly certain that it's game over, even yells no. Of course, with the horse apparently defenseless, this would be the ideal opportunity for the wolves to strike for the kill. They stand spellbound and observe, seemingly uninterested in striking. But why? The video was shot in Italy. This suggests the horses aren't used to wolves, at least not in the sense of being killed by them. Similarly, unlike their northern brethren, Italian wolves are not accustomed to pursuing moose and large animals. They typically forage for food or eat smaller animals like like hares and, on rare occasions, a dog or two. So this was a case of two creatures wondering, what's up with this guy? Number 6. Buffalo and Calf Escape These Hungry Wolves a pack of hungry wolves cornered five buffalo with calves at the start of the video. Seeing the wolves isolate one mother and calf is fantastic. That pack's cooperation is deadly. The buffalo mother, though, is the true hero of this unnatural meeting. Even as the wolves are attacking her and her calf from all sides, she continues to create a barrier between the wolves and the calf. Buffalo is an American bison species that used to roam North America in large herds. The vast bison belt, a swath of fertile grassland that spanned from Alaska to the Gulf of Mexico, east to the Atlantic seaboard, was its historical range about 9000 BC. Commercial hunting and slaughter in the 19th century, as well as the introduction of bovine illnesses from domestic cattle, nearly drove it extinct. By 1889, the species had shrunk from a population of around 60 million in the late 18th century to only 541 creatures. Recovery attempts grew in the mid-20th century, with a current population of 31,000 people. Native American tribes have had cultural and spiritual links to the American bison for millennia. It is the United States of America's national mammal. Number 4. Wolf chase very fast deer and fail to catch it. Grey wolves are making a strong resurgence in Washington state, and their presence can't but have an influence on other species, especially those that these enormous carnivores prey on. Wolves like to eat white-tailed deer and mule deer, two different species that are both prevalent in Washington. Wolves will hunt deer for long distances, up to 10 kilometers, in pursuit of a tasty meal. How these two deer species react to the danger of being chased by wolves in the early years following the predator's reintroduction may reveal behavioral and population changes. Gray wolves rely on both white-tailed and mule deer for food. While white-tailed deer and mule deer may appear similar to the untrained eye, they are completely distinct animals. Mule deer have enormous dark eyes and a black-tipped tail, and and they are larger. The white-tailed deer is a smallish animal with a distinctively long tail with a white underside that rises straight up when scared. Wolves were nearly extinct in Washington until the early 20th century, when they began to return from Idaho, Montana, and Canada. According to the most recent estimates, there are currently roughly 200 wolves in groups spanning eastern Washington. Number 3. 
Wolf Afraid of Sheep Lorne the Black Wolf has reached the age of five months in this video. He's been around the sheep herd daily since he was seven weeks old and has been introduced to other rams. What are your thoughts on this intriguing film depicting two natural adversaries interacting? Do you believe Lorne is just having fun with the ram, or do you believe that he has ulterior motives? The melanistic color variety of the gray wolf is what causes a black wolf. According to genetic studies from Stanford University School of Medicine and the University of California, Los Angeles, wolves with black pelts have a mutation that originated in domestic dogs and was passed down to wolves via wolf-dog hybrids. They are gray wolves with the exception of their coat and knee color. Black wolves were thought to be uncommon in northern Europe, but in 1801, five black wolves were killed in the Swedish region of Varmland, according to Dr. Hagenberg, a medical practitioner in Karlstad. These wolves were entirely black and much larger than the gray wolves that are more prevalent. Their pelts were thought to be so rare that they were sold for three to four times the price of more common color variants. Number 2. Wolverine Attacks Wolf Larger or more numerous predators like a wolf or bears may be able to protect kills. Wolverines have been observed following wolf and lynx trails in order to scavenge the leftovers of their carcasses. Wolverines have been estimated to weigh above 30 kilograms, making them the largest land-dwelling mustelids, with one freak example weighing 35 kilos. They have a thick, cold-resistant coat that is covered in hydrophobic oils, and their enormous upper teeth curl inward to rip even the hardest flesh. What about wolves? Uh, technically, all domestic dogs are gray wolves, and I don't think a wolverine would have any issue with a chihuahua, but that's cheating. At around 40 kilograms, the normal male gray wolf isn't much bigger than outsized wolverines, although the largest known specimen was twice that, a full-grown wolverine would certainly stand a good chance against a wolf. Number 1. Wolves Attack Wild Boar Throughout much of its range, the gray wolf is the primary predator of the wild boar. In a single year, a single wolf may kill 50 to 80 boars of various ages. The wolf, on the other hand, would lose in a one-on-one -on -one battle. However, wolves seldom hunt alone, and studies in the wild and the old sport of boar baiting have shown that a wolf pack would prevail. At the shoulder, a wild boar stands 35 to 37 inches tall, 6 feet, and weighing up to 600 in 60 pounds. That's a gigantic pig. The robust hide of a wild boar, which is covered in dense, bristling hair, makes it practically immune to wolf bites. It is really quick and forceful. If assaulted, he becomes extremely hostile. The tusks of a wild hog are long and pointy. A wild boar would rush into the wolf, knocking it down and hurting it, then gore it repeatedly before the wolf realized what had happened. Even a pack of wolves could take some damage if they assault a ferocious, aggressive boar at full size. A tenacious pack of wolves, on the other hand, would outlast a large boar in the long run. What other animals could defeat a wolf? Do you think we should reintroduce wolves into the wild, or are we better off without them? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!